Hi friends and welcome to Only Green. One of India's well-known award-winning wildlife photographers and the editor-in-chief of one of the most prestigious online wildlife magazines, Wild Sojourns, Meghroy Chowdhury is our guest for the day. She is also a Canon EOS explorer. Professionally, she is an academician and her work in wildlife photography has earned her tremendous respect and love among her peers. Many of her works have been featured and published in various national and international publications and books. She has conducted various seminars, workshops and webinars on wildlife photography and conservation. As a wildlife enthusiast, her main aim is to make people aware of the importance of conserving mother nature and a beautiful denizens which will create a better world with peaceful coexistence. For her, the mantra is conserve or perish. Welcome Meg to Oli Green. Thank you. Thank you, Abby, so much. Uh, I'm really uh, very happy to be here. First of all, I would like to say uh, good evening to all of my friends and all of my uh, relatives and all of my uh, fans there. So uh, I'm very happy to be here. And uh, 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 so <laughs> I'm really looking forward uh, to be chatting with you and also to extending my family more with your help. Okay. Now, today she'll take us through her journey and experiences and also her tips on how to capture good images in wildlife photography. Over to you, Makeroy, for your presentation. Thank you, Abhi, once again. And actually, uh, the journey was not very easy. So, uh, I will be sharing uh, my uh, beginning of my journey and also I will be sharing with my audience uh, uh, tips in a quick way because uh, uh, in a, uh, we don't have so much of time might be later on uh, if they have any queries or anything they can get in touch with me welcome friends once again all of you uh, so my journey into the wildlife photography into the wild uh, into the world of the wildlife was uh, very uh, you can say I started mostly in 2009. Okay, I started as a, uh, you can say as a, uh, I got my training as a herpetologist. Uh, I was very smitten by the reptiles. So I was very, uh, I was in very love, it's very much in love with snakes. So one of my brothers uh, was there. Uh, she, he is no more actually, Chirag Jyoti Roy. He was very close to me. And he was the first one who took me into this world of uh, snakes, into this world of wildlife. Since my childhood, I was very akin to nature. I love to take the photographs of landscape and nature. I used to uh, spend a lot of time in nature. So for me, always it was like two roads diverge in a wood and I took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference. Really, it has made the difference for me. So these are my the hopping days. You can see that I was taking training in the Calcutta Snake Park under the uh, able guidance of uh, late Deepak Mitra sir. He is also no more. But unfortunately, uh, when my uh, brother passed away uh, in 2016, I quit uh, uh, this uh, snake handling and snake rescuing and all these things because uh, he passed away because of this uh, snake bite only. He was a very good herpetologist and very uh, well known also but still you know that life is uh, not always very uh, means good to everybody and he was a very very good person. In 2013 I went to Kanha. Okay, so when I went to Kanha I saw uh, uh, 2009 to 2013, I was doing this harping and all these things. But I had a very basic camera and the basic lens. Uh, in 2009, with that basic camera and basic lens, I went to Kana with my friends to shoot the tiger. But uh, unfortunately or fortunately, I didn't get any tiger. Okay. So I was not unhappy not getting the tiger because why? Because not only the tiger, the Kanha forest was very beautiful and I, with my basic gears, I shot very beautiful birds there. There is a very good bird density there. So I shot the birds there and for the first time I was in a safari and I really loved it like anything. So I 
told myself that why not I start uh, taking the photographs of the beautiful birds and the beautiful animals out here? Why only concentrate on the snakes? So from 2013 October, my life changed and that was the beginning of a new life, a new journey. Okay. And if you say why wildlife, I will always say wildlife is beautiful. All of us know that. Then obviously our life is very much full of stress. Everybody's. So obviously it is a great stress bust. Okay. When you are in the wild, you are, it is the best thing you can, that can happen to you. And obviously there is the joy of collection. Then once you get the collection, you get uh, uh, addicted to what is the species? What is this new bird? I want more birds. I want more species. Okay. And obviously this wildlife also enhances your observation power and it helps in documenting what we are losing one by one. Okay. So as I always tell people that if you destroy nature, nature will also be venge become vengeful and nature will also destroy you. So what we are losing one by one, one by one, uh, all the species are getting extinct. So it is photography is a very, very important tool for conservation. Unless and until we have the photographic document, we can't say that what are the important species we are losing, how, my, how many of them are there. So obviously photography is a very wildlife photography is a very important tool for conservation and we should act accordingly. Okay, so accordingly you can choose your category. If you are interested in birds, you can go for birds, mammals or macro. Macro is very uh easy to find at your back uh, at your uh, balcony you can find it in your uh, uh, in house uh, many places it's easy accessibility is there for birds and mammals you have to travel and all those things but my first interest was in birds so for uh, from 2013 to 2022 uh, january i was doing only in birds uh, but then I suddenly got very much interested in mammals. So now I am also doing mammals with the full fleshed. And I will tell you the stories about the mammals. Obviously, uh, whenever we are doing uh, wildlife photography, it is a very expensive hobby. So we have to balance between our time, family, profession, finances. And for me, uh, uh, by God's grace, I my family is behind me because without my father and without my husband, I wouldn't have been here where I am now standing. So they are the strong pillars uh, behind my success. And professionally also, I'm a government employee, so that is not a problem for me. And by God's grace, time and finance, I have a lot. So these are the important things. So... Now I will tell you, first of all, I will go quickly through the basics, means through the some tips about uh, how to take good photograph. Because many people say we have the gears, we, have, we know the things, but still we are not getting the good photographs that we want. So I will go quickly through the steps of improving your photograph and then at the end i will share with you my experiences and whatever i have faced what are the hurdles or whatever i have faced so uh, first of all master the basics obviously when you are uh, going for it we all know if you are a photographer we all know that the exposure triangle that is the importance of shutter speed aperture is so i don't think that i have to go through it in a details uh, so whether to use the priority mode or the metering, what will be the metering modes, exposure, compensation, autofocus, that also is very important. So these are the main factors you should be taking care of while you are uh, going on the field. Okay. Then you have to choose your gear. Why? If you are doing bird photography, your gear should be different. You are doing mammal photography completely mammal into mammal, then your gear will be different. If you are uh, doing a macro photography, then obviously your entire setup will change. You will have a totally different uh, gear. So, and also among the photographers, we have the beginners, enthusiasts, professionals. So finance is an important factor. So you can choose accordingly and then you can go for the 
uh, things. Not only your gear, but because wildlife photography, as I told you, is very expensive. So uh, once uh, you choose your gear, then you have not only the gear is important, you have to also take the basic other basic accessories, that is lens, camera bag, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, whichever I have mentioned here. So another thing I face is that sometimes I show them my photograph, then suddenly they ask, ma'am, which camera you have used? Isn't it heavy? So I said, eh, bhai, it is okay, the camera I have used, but the person behind the lens is me. Obviously, gear is important, but the person behind the lens is also important. Why I am telling you? Because I started with the very basic gear, very small gear and with the lens, which was 7300. And I became Meg Roy Choudhury with my 7300 photographs. Okay, 2000, till 2015, to 13 October to 2015, January, I was shooting with my 7300 only. Okay. So what is important is uh, the person behind the camera is also important. This is also taken means this, the previous photo you saw, saw is with 7300. This photo is also with 7300. So what I had to do was to give some very extra efforts. What are the efforts? I will tell you later. But those extra efforts I had to give, I had to learn patience. I had to learn perseverance. I had to learn the hard work. And I spent a lot of time on field. And for all my uh, fam out there, I would say that I am a self-taught person. I have never taken any uh, photography classes or I mean, I have not undergone any, undergone any training or anything. So what I used to do is to, I have taken a camera. I used to spend a lot of time on field and whatever I have learned, I have learned from the trial and error basis of my trips on the on-field things. Okay. So obviously, you have to know your gear like at the back of your hand because uh, that is very important. So go once you buy a gear. Nowadays, uh, the gears are uh, very updated. So once you uh, buy the gear, you have to know them. And then the fourth step will be going on the field, definitely. But it is not like that, that you have to go out. Not like that, that you have to go out to the expensive places like uh, the tiger uh, for the tiger safaris or something like that. You can also start with, uh, uh, means why before going, I remember you should charge your batteries, check your memory card. In one of my trips, uh, when I was facing, means I saw the red panda, my memory card was full and the red panda was just there in front of me. Thankfully, the red panda gave me the time. I opened my laptop, I emptied my memory card, and then I put it back in the uh, camera, and then I shoot, uh, shot the means uh, to, uh, took the shots of the red panda. But that much time, uh, to um, uh, ye will not give you. Wildlife will not give you. I was lucky that way. So always before going, see that your batteries are charged and your memory card is empty. So. As I was telling you that it is not that that you have to go to some expensive place to uh, test your gear or to have a hand on experience on your gear. Okay, you can also start it from your backyard. As I was telling if you're doing macro, lots of things you will get in your balcony in your backyard and everything isn't it. So you can start with your backyard or you can go and visit to the nearby lake something or else you will get some parks and even in the zoo photo even if you are not uh, been able to post the zoo photo but for your uh, practice you can go to the zoo and you can start taking the photos and if you have the wooded areas for uh, us in Kolkata and you know I am from Kolkata so uh, sadly we don't have much wooded area it is always concrete areas but there are lots of other places you will get wooded areas. So you can go to the nearby forest. And if you have bird eyes, for example, in Bengaluru or in Kerala, there are Tateka, there is Satisha side. So you can go to the bird heights with your camera and you can uh, do uh, the things. And uh, you can just test your gears and you can also hone your skills more. Field behavior, too, I think, uh, it's a very, very important thing. 
uh, we all know that when whenever we are going to the wildlife, we are going with the clothing, silence, maintaining silence, respect the wildlife. For example, we had very bad, uh, some of the bad things, bad uh, experiences we saw that people are so akin to take the nesting pictures that after, because of these nesting pictures, the mother uh, uh, leaves the uh, babies and the babies die either by the taken by the predators or they die without the food because the mother abandons them okay so and sometimes even i have seen i have heard news that the photographers after taking the images of the nest nest they are crushing the nest with their feet and so that others don't take so you should be ethical whatever you are doing you should be ethical uh, and other things though obviously to respect your fellow photographers don't look down upon our fellow photographer if that photographer has a small lens or don't uh, uh, if you are having a small lens don't jump around to get a good image and uh, disrespect the photographer who is having a bigger lens so both ways uh, this thing so obviously step number five comes the identifying and understand wildlife this is a very important part why because if you when you are now that you are ready for the uh, field now you are ready for the field you have done all the other uh, you have uh, overcome uh, means you have uh, uh, gone through all the other steps now comes the important thing what is the important thing that when you are going to uh, the place for example i am going to ladakh okay so when i am going to ladakh i should know what are the mammals and the birds i can find in ladakh what kind of habitat is there in ladakh and what kind of behavior uh, is of those birds and those mammals in which part they uh, love to stay, what is their behavior, whether they're skittish, whether they are uh, lethargic. So all these things are very important. So there are lots of books and everything. For example, this is an, in, in, this is an image of Indian courser. But Indian courser is a ground bird. But if I don't know that Indian courser is a ground bird, how can I go and uh, if I start searching an Indian courser on the tree? Is it okay? No, it is not okay. So we should know about the habitat. As I told you, that before going to Ladakh, I study about Ladakh. I study about the habitat. I study about the behavior of the birds there. I study, study about the behavior of the mammals there. So that is very important. Now comes a very important thing. What is, what is the right way to shoot? So most of the time when I am doing workshops, people say, ma'am, uh, your images are so good. How can you shoot? How will it shoot? So there are some tips, quick tips about the right way to shoot. So this is my basic, uh, whenever I am shooting uh, uh, some sitting, sitting, static, static uh, 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 subject. Mostly my, it is aperture priority and I keep the ISO minimal and obviously in the burst mode because why it is in the burst mode in landscape you can use the single uh, print but in burst mode because wildlife something is happening continuously there is action so when continuously there is action uh, you have to keep it in the burst mode and what is the best time to shoot is the golden hour we all know that is the dawn and the dusk but uh, that's why the best part to uh, shoot wildlife is uh, during the, uh, uh, you can say during the, uh, from 6, uh, means start of, starting of the light, 5.36 till 10. Because after 10, what happens? There comes the heat haze. If you are shooting water birds, then the water is, uh, the heat from the water comes. So whatever is your good uh, bird is, Whatever the good mammal is, because of the heat haze, because of the fog or it's any other uh, reason, it will become soft. So it will be of no use. So best time to shoot is from 6 to 10 and then again from 3 to till the, uh, the light uh, gives you the. So this is my, uh, this is my, uh, my setting for the, uh, this is my setting for the. Uh, this uh, what you say this uh, the static subject not the flying or the when I am taking a flying or ac action then my setting changes this is for the uh, static words 
and I use the back button, yeah, back button A for an autofocus because it is always uh, good. Uh, once you use the back button, then you can recompose. You have that ability to recompose your uh, uh, shots. And now, too, I am using means I am very comfortable with Canon. So as I am very comfortable with Canon, I am using R5 and R6 with a 100 f 2.8 for macro, 7200 for mammal, then 600 uh, for the birds. And I'm also taking a 400 f 2.8 for the mammal because my interest in mammal has grown, grown a lot. So what happens is that the eye tracking, the eye tracking is fabulous. And you can also see your exposure in the screen, means in the viewfinder. So these means they are making it more and more advanced. So you can use those. Okay. So A phone uh, is uh, good. And these are the basic approach that you can uh, uh, use. I think all the those who do wildlife, they understand this. Uh, nothing much to make them uh, understand uh, because we all know we cannot straightway run towards an animal or a bird. It will fly. The animal will run because they have a fear factor. They are afraid of us. We shouldn't be because unless and until they feel uh, threatened by us or they feel disturbed by us, they do not uh, harm you. So also you take care that not to harm them. So what is the light? Obviously, photography is the play of light. So try to keep the light at the back, behind your back and focus the light on your uh, subject. And as I told you that avoid any kind of her shot top light because top light will give you what? Top light will give you all kinds of shadows and everything. So, and I do not use, uh, I don't like uh, much night photography that I will tell you, uh, Abby. So I uh, don't also do uh, flash photography, but in macro, we have to uh, use flash, but with a, it comes with a diffuser. So that is not uh, any problem for the uh, uh, subject that we are using. So these are the basic things. And then also there will be lots of uh, case that image is not sharp, image is in clutter, what uh, background. For these, what you have to do is that you have to go more and more in, on the field and use tripod. If you are shooting birds or if you are using something like uh, 600, 400. So it is always best to use the tripod. So improving your images, how to improve step number seven tack shop perfect exposure glint in the eye good head turn natural uh, perch and smooth bokeh these are the ideal uh, things for the wildlife image now not always we get all these ideal things in one frame but that's the reason why you have to be patient you have to have your perseverance. You have to wait for the moment. Moment is very important in any wildlife photography. So you have to wait for the moment. Okay. So see, this is another important thing. Shoot at eye level. Then you many people say, ma'am, how can I shoot a bird eye level? Birds are always in the tree. So should we take a, a ladder and uh, move around on the field? No, it is not the fact that birds are always on the tree. They are. They will also, they can come to your uh, eye level. So there lies the trick of the trend that you have to have the patience and the perseverance to let your subject come to the position where you can get an eye level shot. So this is this bird, this golden fulvetta, you won't believe it is one of the most skittish birds in, uh, uh, in the eastern Himalayas. Okay. And it is this small and it is always fluttering. So it was going up, 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 up. But I was standing there and it was also foggy and it was also raining. But I was in, it was very cold. It was in taken in Darjeeling. And uh, I was waiting I waited this bird to come to my eye level with the glint in its eyes for one and a half hour. Then only I got this shot. Same thing is with this beautiful wobbler we have in India. One of the, this is the most beautiful wobbler. One of the most beautiful birds that you get in India. People were telling that, oh, it's uh, very few people have this um, image. Jenny has very good images of uh, this one. 
So what I had to do is I knew that this bird is there, but it is also similarly very skittish and very small. And it was only flying here and there. And there were three of them. I went to I went to Ladakh uh, for this bird, and then I waited for this in the same place for one whole day. So from at three a.m. I started from my place. I reached there at eight. I stayed there till see uh, till uh, sorry four five till five. Then in the dark we came back from the mountains after taking the shot. So what is it? It is all about your patience, your hard work, and your perseverance. So be parallel to the subject. What does it mean? From the beak of the subject to the tail of the subject, the subject should be what the subject should be very sharp. So. You know, this I took it in uh, the same things you can see here. Both the images are good, but the second, the the bigger one, the bigger uh, image, from beak to tail, it is sharp. So aesthetically, it is very beautiful. Aesthetically, is a very beautiful, and obviously, you have to wait for the head angle. If you are uh, giving an image of a bird, the bird or the mammal is looking there. How it will be aesthetically appealing to you? You have to have that direct eye contact with your means. Not the means. I am not telling the direct eye contact when you are approaching, but when you are taking the photograph. So the eyes with the glint should be there. Similarly, for this collared owlet, this is one of the smallest owls of India, and it is very difficult to find it. But I found it, and I waited for it at least forty-five to fifty minutes. To give me the correct head angle. Okay. Similarly, here this uh, uh, Indian gazelle was going. Means I was sitting. I was sitting there. I was sitting on the ground, and uh, I got down from my car and I was waiting. And I was waiting, and it was going straight without looking at me. Then I started to think about Dilwale Dunani la le jayenge, palat, palat, palat. Because see the beautiful, it was raining and the beautiful ambience. So if the that beautiful uh, mammal look at me, looks at me, how beautiful will be the frame? So I was saying palat, 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 is palat, palat. So just like that, suddenly it looked back, and I took this photograph. And you can see the eye contact are very important. This is a very rare species of monkey. That is the spectacle monkey or the fire sniff monkey, which we get in the northeast part. Very difficult to get in the wild, and I was lucky to get it with the baby. I could have given the full frame of the family, but actually, means the three of them were there. But actually, I wanted to showcase the beautiful, innocent look of the baby. That's why when it looked at me, I took the. image similarly this uh, fox was also looking here and there this is this den so we were sitting at a mound behind a mound uh, some distance uh, but there were some dogs roaming around so he was very vigil she was very vigil she was coming out and looking here 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 but not looking at us but the moment she looked at us i took this image same here this is also an image which is of the palat the jungle cat was going and i was saying oh palat 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 but this i took from the car sometimes if you are in the car also you can get some good eye level images if you are trekking the up the hill then also you will get good eye level images if sometimes you can also use uh, some mounds or something to get eye level image so you can understand this i have taken in when i i went on inside the water i am not a good swimmer i am very afraid of water but sometimes in order to get good images we have to go to that extent that even uh, we have to overcome our fear and we have to give dedicate our 100% to it so i uh, went inside the water and i took this image now i will tell you why the ground level image or the uh, images are important see this image i have taken from the cart 
same it was having a rodent this actually this is one of my best series that i have taken so it was raining and the rain stopped and i was passing i always carry my gear in my car you never know what is there so i was in maharashtra that time so i was passing by and i saw that this uh, uh, eagle was having a meal so i it was having a rodent kill so i understand that what is the behavior that when it is feeding it will not fly so that is the study of the behavior so what i saw that when i am taking the image from the car it was not good so i got down from the car i crawled with my gear 600 and everything on the mud it was full of mud okay 20 to 25 feet i crawled and i was positioning me in a safe distance where it was also comfortable with me and i got this series of images now why shoot at the wild uh, eye level this is the reason why should you try to shoot at the eye level this is an image of a uh, tiger coming up this is one of my favorite tigers that is maman and i am smitten by maman's grace and in love with him very much is from bandavgar and i was sitting down uh, in the uh, gypsy means mostly i travel alone i go for solo trips or mostly two people so what we do middle seat we take out and i sit and in uh, down the gyps so whenever we are getting images we are getting it almost to the ground level images so obviously that changes the perspective action and flight shot these are my setting for the action and uh, flight shots because action or flight shot are very important in every uh, aspect because wildlife is about what action so try always to capture the action this this image i have taken with the electronic shutter of r5 and you will not get a image like this in chestnut wing cuckoo because it's one of the very rarely photographed bird and that too with this pose it is uh, it is very difficult i gave totally full one day i spent behind this only chestnut wing cuckoo okay full one day from 6 am to 6 pm full one day i was on the road so whenever we are on the road here also i was on the uh, uh, on the uh, i was upside down means uh, i was uh, crawling towards the uh, on the beach i was almost in the water when it came this i took obviously not from the ground but this i took from the lower level of the car from the lower level of the car okay so always when we are on the road there are some difficulties that we uh, face as women isn't it we have some of our physical uh, problems for example whenever there we have to use the washroom or any other things then we face lots of problems as women ha huh. so the dollar bird is there this is also a very small uh, bird and to get an image like this is uh, very uh, difficult and you can see the pro is happily landing on the eagle step eagle okay and as i was telling you so we have to face a lot of problems when we are on the road because you can understand from 6 am to 6 am we have to uh, 6 am to 6 am uh, if we are on the road there is no washroom nothing so we have to train ourselves uh, to that so we should be ready to sacrifice those things means we should be ready to train train ourselves so uh, that is the important thing that you should learn you should learn because we wake up at 3 am in the morning then we have to freshen up we have to do all the things and then we have to go out and we will take our uh, we will take our uh, sometimes we don't even have our food for the entire day when we come back then we only have food sometimes we only feed on water there is nothing for us so these are the few tips on the uh, how to make your images beautiful sometimes it is not always important to follow the rule of th third in wildlife because that is not possible but you can see this is the portraits and sharp image you can feel this is one of my most uh, favorite uh, images see this is uh, another favorite image of mine 
uh, I gave two days for the sloth bears in Hampi. It is, it got, I got it in Hampi. But I wanted to take a, not the sitting pose or the walking pose. I wanted to take some different pose. So I have lots of different poses I got from there. So you have to give a breathing space. That is wherever the subject is looking. Give some space to that. Otherwise, if you make it too tight a crop you can make it for the portraits but sometimes if it make it too tight a crop then what will happen it will you will see that you will find that as if you are strangulating the uh, subject then include the habitat like the see the beautiful after inclusion of the beautiful habitat it is so beautiful Then adding interesting element, this is also a very good bird to have in your kitty. And this is not the nest. It was, uh, the nest was some, somewhere else. I saw that everybody is taking that picture. It was quite far. The nest was quite far. We were sitting on the one hill uh, and uh, the tree was there in some uh, down. So uh, it was coming on this uh, tea trunk and it was sharpening its beak. So I... Uh, added some interesting element. I wanted to put some different image. So always try to take some different perspective. For example, you can easily understand that I am, I am in the water almost. Completely, I am actually, I was completely after taking the shot, I, uh, a bit of water also entered my lens. Okay. So in order to get good images, you have to have a clear idea about the good perspective and you have to catch the action. And you have to catch the interaction. See, this is the eternal truth behind husband and wife. See the, the Bechara husband there listening to the wife. See, I told you, no? so the beautiful interaction. This is the beautiful interaction between a father and daughter. This is Mahaman, my favorite uh, 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 tiger. And with one of, her, uh, one of his uh, cubs. He has four cubs now, uh, female cubs. And try to catch them in pairs. It is always very uh, appealing if you get the mammals or the uh, pairs. But you all, all of us know that the female of the uh, animal kingdom are not very beautiful, unlike the human beings. So isn't it? <laughs> so try to catch them uh, in pairs. Minimalism is also a beautiful aspect of photography. Now you can use minimalism for creative photography, giving lots of space. Your subject becomes small, but you can give a lot of space to create the aura of your image. Not only take the image, always try to make the image. Not this taking off image, anybody can take the image, but you have to be creative. For example, shooting against the sunlight. It's a creative aspect. This is international blurring with intentional blurring, sorry, intentional blurring with the slow panning of the slow shutter speed. This is a side lit image. Don't give up also because you can also make images uh, uh, after the light is gone. Beautiful images also you can make. And I keep my post processing as you have seen a bit uh, to the most uh, means very simple. And I try to take images by either by changing my position a bit or by, by waiting for the subject to change its position to come to the proper frame where I will get my desired result. So my three mantras are practice, patience and perseverance. There comes the story of the great red panda. I was searching for now I will talk to you about my experiences. I was searching for Red Panda for uh, quite a long time, that time, 2014-15. Three times I went to Singalila, but three times I, were, I came with empty hand. In the fourth time, I went to, uh, fourth time during the Nepal earthquake, I went to Singalila. And there was that uh, vigorous earthquake, I was in uh, that class in Singalila only. So I didn't know about, I understood there is a very bad earthquake because we felt it. We felt the tremors and everything. It was very bad. But I didn't know uh, how much it has happened. So at, in the evening, there is no network there. So that is another problem. We cannot, uh, in uh, jungles, we most of the time, we cannot contact our family still now. 
so there was no network in the evening uh, my father called in a landline of that uh, hotel where we were there and he was scolding me are come back there is a earthquake you have to come back uh, come back that was the second day of my expedition for the uh, red panda then i told my father no ma no papa i am not coming back without the red panda be there be earthquake be there be thunder be there be storm whatever it is but this time i am not coming back without my nine days completing my nine days in singalila so i was hellbent and he was very worried so i am a bit daredevil kind of a girl i never worry about what people say what people uh, talk about so i give a damn about all those things i am very focused in my own work a very focused that is very important you have to be focused in your work so that way on the 9th still 9 days i search for trade panda but i didn't get so i was very as usual i was very, and three four times we felt the tremors the after tremors of the earthquake so i was returning and the last day when i was returning somebody said uh, somebody told me that if there is a place there you have to trek down and there that person saw red panda then i told my guide let's go i have at least one and a half hour time let's go and search for it before going down to manevanj so we trekked down with all our things and then my guide says see ma'am there is the habre abra is the red panda when i saw the red panda i got oh my god it is there sitting at the eye level with a beautiful background and it's a beautiful species because the red in this red panda is more prominent than the white so i was i started taking my images with trembling hand i was just so excited because at that time there was no good images of the red panda in the wild so that time it was very something very 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 precious and my memory card you know the memory card got full then i say are bhai kya kare mera memory card khatam ho gaya ma'am it's okay if we don't disturb it will be staying there so i learned that if we don't disturb the red panda then the red panda will be there for hours they can be there for hours so as as i told you i took my laptop emptied the memory card then again i started shooting and after one and a half hour i had to leave the late red panda because my flight time was nearing so i had to leave the red panda and come so obviously social presence is important because uh, what you are shooting if you keep it to yourself you cannot go so post the images ask for critics and obviously follow more images more uh, uh, the works of your masters and for your development that will help this uh, experience is also very important you know this is the indian eagle lounge one of the award winning images of mine you won't believe abi i went to maharashtra also for this image and i saw it sitting for a quite but everybody was having the sitting image so first day i observed it then i saw that it is flying sometimes it fly then i made a frame in my mind precon means preconceptualization is also an important thing of wildlife photography so i at the evening when i came back home i precon previsualized previsualize my frame that the i should take a frame where the eagle lounge should be flying towards my camera flying to my camera otherwise i will not take three days 6 am to 6 pm i was waiting there with my camera with my 600 that when this bird will fly now i am not that type of i am uh, not that type of uh, photographer who will put uh, stones throw stones and uh, make the birds fly again and again no i am not that type of photographer i am that way i am always very ethical and even i don't take the images of the nesting i even don't take any nesting images okay so uh, what was that i was waiting on the third day around 4 4:30 pm suddenly it flew to my camera and you won't believe it was a handheld shot and i got eight shots oh. and my eight shots i got but for eight shots i had to wait for three days given my entire uh, time there having my breakfast lunch everything there so you can understand that this is the up wing uh, this is the down wing this is the parallel wing and this is the up wing so this much of thing dedication you should be having
this to i told you the indian spot article that i came down so this is actually the first image i got then after that it has finished then it was tossing the last morsel okay so tiger world tiger world i am uh, I just started tiger photography and mammal photography uh, my only mammal good photography was red panda so many people used to call me panda girl at that time so it was also it has got lots of uh, accolades and uh, published in bbc and uh, uh, published in bbc then in sanctuary asia cover and everything so still my uh, red panda images and red panda will remain special all the special to me so i have started my tiger photography from this february february end i had undergone a major operation in november and that covid twice had a, uh, i have a heart problem a very severe heart problem erratic heartbeat missing heart uh, heartbeats but still uh, i am unstoppable no one can stop me because when it comes to nature no one can stop me so these are some of my favorite tiger images i will show and i also last time to i had a means i came from minus 7 to 47 47 degree okay so at the last day of the tiger safari in bandavgarh i had a heat stroke heat stroke but still i went to the evening safari after recovering and taking rest so this tiger was sitting just 12 15 feet i was uh, like oh, oh oh tiger there just 12 15 feet um, so this tigress it's a tigress and very rarely photographed these are some of me uh, some of my this is maman my favorite one okay see the grand uh, presence this is another spotty cub this is mama coming up this is uh, my uh, first tiger image i have taken in tadoba uh, way back in 2015 the only tiger image i had before february okay <laughs> so you can understand this was also very near to me sitting very near to me now this is a natural history uh, thing i will show you this is a video see this uh, monkey this monkey cub was uh, injured and the crow was feeding on it live then the tiger came took the monkey so this is a natural history moment that i have uh, seen and obviously during corbett this year corbett the grassland was very beautiful and the elephants were also very beautiful see this is a beautiful this is one of my most favorite images see there are three baby elephants one is sleeping and those two baby elephants were pushing him are get up get up we want to play they wanted to play and the mother was happily feeding on the grass and this is that always the beautiful river crossing the ramganga river crossing in corbett this is a cute baby elephant i have lots of videos and you know abby lots of videos and but i am not getting time always roaming around roaming around so that is a problem so brown bear trip is another with this i will end my um, session brown bear trip is another very very uh, uh, means dear to my heart trip because i went to uh, kargil uh, and it is a one dras dras is a one of the most beautiful places in india you must visit and it is safest because i went there for 20 days in a solo trip people there are very good they are very very welcoming they took care of me like their own sister like their own didi so i had a beautiful time i spent 6 days in ladakh 9 days in dras and 3 days in kashmir and i believe me one of my best experiences i had was this brown bear for this brown bear i spent 9 days consistently every day waking up at 4 getting out by 5 coming back by 7 7:30 because there is light till 7 7:30 so throughout the day i used to be in the field and i i got 
the you can see i will share with you not much of editing i could do i have just sharing with you the raw video i got the brown bear with two two months pub which is a very rarely photography so nine days was like too too good for me This was the first shot I have taken of the brown bear with the uh, little cubs, ones. Little ones. This was another cub which was playing in the snow. It was really, really very good, and I was not ready to come back because then my husband told me, "You marry that brown bear." He was so what? You are not coming back from Dras. You have fallen in love with this brown bear so much. to go and marry the brown bear this is another i saw 11 brown bears 11 and they are critically endangered because they are the himalayan brown bear they are the different subspecies so it is very difficult and they are getting very extinct so we are trying to save them to conserve them by various methods now so uh, see they are uh, running this was another mother and uh, son and this is one of my favorite images it's like the simba kind of uh, image actually so how can we succeed we can succeed purpose practice patience perseverance and lots of pers perspirations another thing that what i give back to nature because i don't do it professionally professionally I, as i told you i am an academician i don't want anything from nature i get lots of things from nature why i get the peace of mind i get the happiness my real happiness from nature so i have started a wild soldiers magazine we run this magazine it is free of cost you can download the magazine free of cost we will be coming with our uh, first issue of this year uh, we will be coming up uh, our anniversary issue in the month of august and uh, uh, it is a very high quality magazine and we keep we we give money to this but we pay for this but we don't get means we don't take money from people for this so i circulate it free of cost because with the sole purpose of conservation conserving nature and i am also running a trust i have also made a trust that is in the memory of my nani chinu datta memorial trust Uh, and this trust is now starting to work for the underprivileged children and the old people as well for as well as well for the um, for the conservation purpose thank you that was really great i mean i mean in a very short time i think i had planned a lot of questions but then you had covered everything i mean i wanted to ask you what is the message that you're trying to convey through your photograph what is your message to youngsters who are coming into this field but then i think in that one beautiful presentation you've covered almost everything it's really good very exhaustive maybe it is a bit longer i don't know how much time it has taken no, that's okay uh, uh, but i will tell you one thing that my idea to the uh, i will tell you uh, one thing i want to give my message to the young uh, women photographers who are coming that there will be all the detractors there to uh, create all types of hurdles in your way but learn to give a damn don't because as a single woman i had faced lots of problems in my wildlife journey 
but i am very strong it is not easy to break me so every time what i did was that i was very focused in my work so be focused in your work do whatever you like if your family and your friends trust you and you yourself trust yourself what you are doing is right no don't bother about what others say that is the last thing you should unway because those people mean nothing to you they are nothing to you you yourself and your surroundings are important to you so listen to your head and your heart and work don't pay attention to what other people are saying learn to give a damn and be remain focused and carry on with your good work because there are very very good uh, women photographers coming up they are very good they are working very because i am learning from the newcomers they are uh, and i always believe in uh, a, a mutual uh, exchange of learning learning is uh, a big thing so always there should be a learning process that, that covers the motivational part also is very well <laughs> said <laughs> okay <laughs> thank you thank you abhi thanks a yeah. lot for being with us i mean it's been a, a really great almost an hour of uh, real good information your love for nature your passionate your passion about nature your passion to give back to the nature give back to the community uh, photography community all those things i mean i could really see it in your eyes i could really see it in your passion in your presentation thanks a lot and wishing you all the very best wishing you uh, more accolades coming your way more uh, recognitions more awards coming your way and your uh, uh, the charity i mean the charity uh, trust that you've put up let that also see a lot of uh, good growth in the future thanks a lot thank you thank you so much once again thank you friends okay with that take care bye bye